All right, man, we back. Mercy Sports Talk, we in the building. Appreciate you guys for tapping in with your boy today. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. To tonight, I will be uploading the prediction for the Arizona Cardinals taking on the Lions later on tonight. So I'm going to get that up. It was going to be in the morning, but I was like, I uploaded it at night. So let's get to this video. Some rumors out there that Marvin Jones Jr. is uh, basically could be traded. Um, I heard some talk about the Patriots, so I'm not sure if he's officially on the market, but... If he is on the market, I think, um, you know, I think it'd be interesting. He had been trade talk for the last couple of years. I think for the last three years since Patricia got here, I think he would have might have been one of those players that didn't really fit the Patricia mold and might have had too much of a voice in the locker room. And apparently they pretty much fixed that right now. But he hasn't got off to the great greatest year. A lot of people was asking before this year and years past who was the true number one receiver, him or Kenny Galladay. And I think... The answer has been answered. The question has been answered. With Marvin Jones really struggling to get separation without Galladay out there. But let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And check out Detroit Lions Talk playlist for more videos like this. And yeah, Marvin Jones is probably one of the best number two receivers um, the past couple of years besides this year. Um, right now he's number one and he can't really get that separation. It's kind of been year, the last couple of years he can't really get that separation. That's why he got... You know, the highest, you know, rate of contested balls caught in the National Football League last year. He won up, I think he was number one or close to number one. And you can really see that now that things are shifted down the pecking order. And I remember somebody in the comment section saying that Taylor, you know, he was talking about, well, Taylor Decker plays a more important position in Galladay. And that's true, but he basically was trying to say that's why he got paid in Galladay and get paid. And we deep at receiver, we didn't need Kenny Galladay. And that's why you lead, you lead a, a, the football talk to the pros like me, all right? Now that Galilee wasn't out here, and I'm pretty sure I can't remember who he was. Now he wasn't out here. I wonder what he think now. Oh, we deep at receiver. Now they look pedestrian. That's see, you think one spot is deep because once the major player is there, he make everybody else look superhuman. Now that Galladay ain't there, everybody looks subordinary. Everybody below ordinary right now. And when TJ Hawkinson should be the number one target for pass catching, when your organization just can't figure out how to give him the ball consistently then that really makes everybody look less. I know they're going to throw it to Galladay five times. So, I mean, uh, Hawkinson five times. So, I could just lock down everybody else and make them beat us. And they can't beat them, all right? Amendola in the slot, he having a little bit of trouble. Marvin Jones having trouble. Seif is still trying to find his way. Agnew was a non-fucking factor in the receiving game. And really, what you left out there is if they throw it to Hawkinson, Swift out the backfield, and, you know, that's pretty much it you really can count on right now. So, that just lets you know that I think Kenny Galladay established his worth just by being gone. So I think people are starting to realize that and wake up and that the receiving core ain't deep as you think it is. You know, once the number one guy go there, there's not a number one left on the roster. You know, so uh, hopefully Galilee can really amplify the receiving core, but really Galilee should have been, I mean, Hawkinson should have been a number one guy. But, you know, Marvin Jones Jr., you know, has Quintez Cephas shown enough to step in that spot for the rest of the year if they do move Marvin Jones Jr.? I mean... We'll see what Galilee get back. I mean, most people think we're on the highway to hell to the number one pick anyway. Um, some people believe they will or won't sign back uh, Kenny Galilee. But I, at this point, if they don't win this Sunday, I don't care if they're competitive and lose. If they don't win this Sunday, I think I would have that conversation about moving him. Obviously, most people say, well, they do so many trades with the Patriots, he'll be going there. Could he help Cam? Yeah, he can help Cam. But I think they're looking at a tier one type of receiver coming in. Maybe Antonio Brown. I don't know if Robert Kraft can put his personal feelings aside. Maybe Odell Beckham, maybe Allen Robinson, or those type of guys. But, you know, right now, uh, you know, Marvin Jones Jr. in the last year of his deal. So do you let him walk, or can you get a fourth or a fifth round draft pick for him is the question. So, you know, me personally, after this Sunday, should tell us a lot. If Galilee come back and he healthy and then, you know, Marvin Jones just take off when the coverage not rolled to him, and you think you got a, a, ch a chance of winning, well, you got to keep him. Because I think you got into eight weeks to where you have to trade them at the eighth, at the deadline. And like I said before, I think at some point you got to look. Is Cephas going to be your slot of the future or your number two of the future? Either or is fine because you still got to go find your receiver next year. So if Cephas is playing the slot, then you got to find yourself a number two receiver. Now, if you don't want to sign Galladay back and you plan on moving on from him, then you got a rookie coming in with a receiver core that really got probably a second-year guy, Quintez Cephas, that's going to be working the slot. You do got Hawkinson, but you got to ask yourself, you know, can they really risk losing Kenny Galladay 
and Marvin Jones Jr., but if they rebuild it next year, I mean, I guess so. I would keep Galladay there. He would be a great friend to a rookie quarterback, you know, if I'm Sheila. And also you got a tight end that could be a great fan. Then you got, you know, Cephas who got some experience playing on the outside. You could put him on the inside and let him work out. So really you got to establish offensive line when they get healthy and develop. You got to establish slot receiver at minimum with Cephas. And you got to establish tight end and number one receiver. So I feel like they got to bring him in. But Marvin Jones at this point, I think he is expendable. I think he's showing his age. I think he's showing that he is dependent on Kenny Galilee really taking a lot of the attention and coverage. And with that, without that coverage and that tension, that he really pedestrian. So, I mean, if they want to trade him to the Patriots, something I heard, I mean, that would be that would be right on point to what they've been doing, even if Quinn Trisha on the way out or if any other team be looking to grab him. I mean, we'll see. But, hey, let me know what you guys think about the Lions perhaps shopping Marvin Jones Jr. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you got a business question, cry, response, or video request. Appreciate the love, support. Want to make a donation? Cash app, dollar sign, CJGood313. PayPal link in the description. All that's in the description. Uh, best way to donate personally is share the video. And also check out my other channel, Goodfellas Sports TV, right here on YouTube. One time for the one time. Let me know what you think in the comment section. We gone.